Hi, this is Brooks, and this is part three of my simple calculator tutorial for App Inventor 2. In part one, we built the user interface. In part two, we built the code blocks for the number buttons. In this part, we will build the blocks for the operator buttons, the equals button, and the reset button. We'll do the reset button first because that's the easiest. When the user clicks the reset button, we want it to reset all of our values to null or empty. We choose when reset button dot click from the reset button section. We drag the set to block from the variable section into the open slot and choose global current from the drop down menu. We drag a number block from the mass section into its open slot and leave it at zero. We do the same thing with the global previous variable. And finally, we set the label one dot text value to an empty string from the text section. Now let's move on to the operator buttons. By operator, I mean the plus, minus, times, and divide buttons. We choose when plus button dot click from the plus button section. Now let's recall in part two of the tutorial when we thought about how the user will use the calculator. The user will enter a number an operator, and then a second number, and we'll perform an operation using those three values. We created three variables called current, previous, and operator to store these values. The first thing we want this button to do is assign its text value to that operator variable. So add a set global operator block from the variable section, and we set this value to the text value of the plus button by choosing button1.text from the button1 menu. Note that when the user clicks on an operator button, that signifies that the user is finished entering the first number. You can think of the operator button as a transitional point between the two numbers, or operands. So one of the functions of the operator button must also be to move the value stored in current to the variable named previous and then reset the value of current. To do this, we move the value stored in global current to the global previous variable by setting global previous to get global current. And then we reset the value of global current by choosing set global current to zero. Finally, we want to show the operator on the display, so we choose set label one dot text to get global operator. We can build the same series of blocks for minus, times, and divide by copying the series of blocks. You can right click on the block and choose duplicate, or you can copy it by clicking on it with control C and pasting it with control V. We then just need to update the relevant fields with the appropriate button names. Again, like in part two of the tutorial, you'll notice that there is a lot of repeated code. This allows us to make use of the procedure section of App Inventor. We create a new procedure by dragging a to procedure do block from the procedure section. We rename the procedure something meaningful. I'll name mine operator button click. I'll then change the input parameter name to operator text. This is the data that will be sent to the procedure by the blocks calling it. Now we just move the blocks from our plus button to the procedure. We need to remove the plus button dot text block from the set global operator to block. We hover over the operator text parameter for a second until we see the get operator text block. We drag that block into the empty slot. Now we return to our plus button click block and drag the call operator button click block from the procedure section into the empty slot where our code used to be. We drag the plus button dot text block from the plus button section into the empty slot. Remember that this calls the procedure and sends it the text value of the plus button. The procedure stores this value in its own operator text variable and uses it in the procedure's code. Now we delete the operator buttons we built before for minus, multiply, etc. and just copy and paste our new button three times updating all of the relevant fields as necessary.
Next, we need to tackle the Equals button. When a user clicks this button, we want to take the first number and second number and perform an operation on them according to which operator the user chose. Because what our code does depends on which operator is chosen, we need to set up a conditional if-then block to cover each possibility. We drag out an if-then block from the control section and then an equals block from the control section. We want to check which operator is chosen. For example, if the operator stored in the operator variable is equal to plus, then we add the two numbers. If it is equal to divide, we divide the first number entered, which is stored in the variable named previous, by the second number entered, which is stored in the variable named current. So, from the variable section, we choose the get block and set it in the first open slot of the equals block. We then choose global operator from the drop down menu and drag an empty text block from the text section into the remaining open slot. We'll type the plus symbol into this block. This is saying if the content of the operator variable is equal to the plus symbol, then we do something. What do we do? We want to perform the operation chosen on the two numbers entered and store the new value in the variable named current. We choose the set to block from the variable section and choose global current from the drop down menu. And because the operator for this condition is addition, we choose the addition block from the math section. We fill the two empty slots with get blocks for the global previous and global current variables. This takes care of the condition that the value stored in the operator variable is plus. Now we need to tell the program what to do if the value is minus. We add an else if block by hovering over the corner of the if block and dragging the else if block into the empty slot presented. We then duplicate the equals block and change the text from the plus symbol to the minus symbol. We now choose the subtraction block from the math section and duplicate the global previous and global current variables and place them into the subtraction block's empty slots. We repeat this process for multiplication, and for division. Finally, we want to display our answer, which is stored in the variable named current. So we choose setLabel1.text to get global current. We'll also reset the value of previous to zero. Now at this point, you can stop if you want to. If you test it, you'll see that it works just fine. There is an improvement we can make. I'll get to that in a second. If you choose to stop here, I want to thank you for watching my tutorial. As with all programming, there are almost certainly better or more efficient ways to build this project. I encourage you to leave suggestions for improvements in the comment section. Also, if you look in the math section of the blocks editor, you'll see that there are lots of other functions there that you can experiment with. Good luck and have fun! Now, as for the optional improvement, while testing, I noticed that there is a slight problem, and that occurs because we didn't anticipate all of the things a user might try. For example, what if they enter a number, an operator, another number, and then instead of pressing equals, they enter a second operator? The results will not be accurate. We can fix this, but you don't have to if you don't want to. I'll go over this optional fix in part 4 of this tutorial.